ready to walk through my boat, uh, show you what it's all about. There's a ton of walkthrough videos from pros all over YouTube, but I really want to show you kind of like a journeyman's, like every man's tournament boat on how you can like get by, have a really good tournament setup, a good bass game setup without spending like $80,000. So let's take a look. Come on in. All right. So this is my 2005 Bass Cat Frontier Classic. It's a 19 foot bass boat. So it's almost 15 years old. You take care of your boat. It'll last a long time. Starting in the back, it's powered by a 200 horsepower Mercury EFI. The last year before they went to the Optimax, it's a super tough motor. Uh, it gets the job done. 24 pitch Mercury Fury prop, uh, a jack plate, which helps with the performance and the setup. It's not, it's a manual jack plate uh, with a, like a six inch setback. Um, so it's been super reliable. It's not fancy, electronic fuel injected. Um, came with the boat, it's been super good. So, also on the back, right, we have the talons, we have the dual 10 foot talons. Um, the reason I went with the 10 foot talons, I used to have eights. I feel like this is the best balance of reaching the greatest amount of depth of water with the lowest amount of clearance. You can see it's barely taller than my motor. So, any place I can usually get in under bridges and culverts, I can get in with my talon, I can get in with the boat. And it's perfect, I don't have to adjust them or put them down to go in and out of my garage. So that's why I really like them. So anytime I'm in shallow water, fishing docks, spawning fish, loading, unloading my boat, talons get a ton of use. They're a great asset to your boat. Two talons is really important to really be able to lock and hold yourself. Uh, a single talon is kind of nice, but it doesn't not really affect it as two. So, Let's hop in the boat and look in the compartments. All right, so here we go. This is the uh, kind of where the rest of the power comes from behind the motor. This is where all the batteries are. So we have a oil reservoir. We have a Group 29 AGM style battery that runs my graphs and my main motor. Um, it's important to have a really good battery if you're gonna run a lot of electronics, which we'll see later. Uh, and then I have dual 31 AGM batteries to run the trolling motor. So I run a 24 volt system um, and that's, you know, for a 19 foot boat is a really nice choice. You know, you could go up to 36 volt, uh, but 24 volt does it pretty good. And one of the things that really works for me, so right next to the batteries here, I have this onboard charger, but this is a special onboard charger. This is actually a direct current charger from Encoda that charges my trolling motor batteries when my main motor is running. So once the main motor alternator tops off the main starting battery, it starts trickle charging and uh, topping off my trolling motor battery. So that gives me more power, longer power for my 24 volt system. So it extends the life on, it makes me competitive all day and gives me juice no matter what. I got an extra prop back here. I got some extra oil. Um, I sometimes keep jumper cables back here. You never can be too careful. So that's what I keep in the back compartment. We're keeping this real in this raw. This is fresh off a tournament. So this is nothing special, nothing set up. This is how I use it every day. So we got divided live wells. Nice big live wells for tournament fishing. Um, I keep my call clips here, my non-puncture call clips uh, in the live well, whatever, I put five of them in there, whatever the limit is in the tournament, and that helps me manage my fish. Um, behind the driver's seat, there's a compartment. I keep a few things in here. Right now I do have a jumper cable. I keep some of my cleaning products, fire extinguisher, fuel treatment, quick clean, which is really important. You wanna be running some kind of fuel treatment like this, whether it's a, a Starbright, or the quick lean or uh, sea foam to combat the ethanol. Um, we've got some cleaning rags, uh, miscellaneous stuff. I try to keep it kind of empty so whenever any of my buddies or a co angler jump in the boat, they got a place for some of their stuff. So, mashing compartment over here. Um, there's all kinds of goodies in the one behind my seat, so let's take a deep look in here. I guess I should mention one more thing. I don't actually use an onboard charger to charge my batteries. I took that out because it wasn't reliable and it didn't work. And plus, an onboard charger actually does nothing for me when I'm fishing but add weight to my boat. So take a few minutes, use manual chargers. It takes a little extra weight out of my boat, keeps things clean and light. Uh, and then if you have a problem, it's easy to swap these around. They're not hardwired in your boat. So in this compartment, I keep all the stuff. I got a little bit of tackle in here, um, wet wipes. I think you guys can understand what this is for. You never want to go without your socks when you're fishing. So keep some of these in your boat. Um, we got some spare waters in here, sunscreen, a few tools, spare line, extra visor in case you lose one, um, a lithium power pack, which I'm actually charging today because actually today 
I uh, broke my uh, charger, so I actually used this to power my GoPro to get the footage for a tournament video today. Uh, you can also use this to start your boat. You can use this to start your truck. This is a really great thing to have. I'll put a link to this down in the description so you can see it uh, and pick one up. This is really, you should keep one of these in your truck and in one of these in your boat. They're pretty inexpensive and they do uh, amazing things to keep you out of trouble. Um, got some tripods in here uh, for doing some filming, bug spray, scales, extra culling clips, boat snacks, so uh, extra buffs, sun gloves. So basically all the kind of necessities for the boat go behind my seat. Um, and that's what uh, largely is in this compartment. So let's move forward and see what else we got here. So we do have a, a console storage here. I will keep some sunscreen, uh, map chips, uh, cloths to uh, clean my graphs, uh, my remote for my Ultrex, which is super handy. Anytime I'm fishing with kids, juniors, doing boat captain, I can sit in the back of the boat and run the motor, let them fish up there for front, not get in their way, and run everything so they don't have to worry about it. All right. So this is where we find our fish. We're at the council now. We got two graphs, a Hummingbird Helix 10 and an older 999. Um, I kind of upgrade graphs in rotation. Um, so I'll kind of slowly upgrade these and bring them together. But they still all network together through the Hummingbird Hub down here. Uh, so they all share wear points. They can share uh, transducers and things like that. Uh, the reason I like two graphs at the dash, a couple reasons. One. If I ever have a failure in any of my three units, I still always have two that work. So I can swap them. If I lose my front, I can pull one up, pull one back. Um, it's a really nice extra reliability so you're never without a graph if one goes down. The other big thing, when I'm pre-fishing, I like to be able to run Lake Master on one unit, maybe Onyx on the other. There are things on different map chips that one will show that one with the other that can really show you uh, a ton, especially when you're going to new big water, reservoirs, the Mississippi River. Uh, be able to see two maps at the same time will show you different things on the lake and help you break down water fast. Plus, I can do a full screen map, I can do full screen structure scan, see a lot more stuff, and I really think that aids in helping finding fish. Uh, tilt and trim on the wheel for safety. Um, don't have to take your hands off the wheel when you're driving at high speeds or in rough water to uh, adjust the trim. Hot foot, another big safety feature. Things are falling off the boat. Um, right? Don't have to adjust the throttle uh, with your hand, you keep two hands on the wheel, you drive it just like a car, uh, you put it in gear and then uh, give it the gas and then it's, it's just you can uh, navigate rough water and tricky situations a lot better with a hot foot. Extra switch for my talons here uh, in the back, I've also got a switch up front. So that's, this is where the, the finding the fish happens and this is uh, kind of the, the council and I spent a lot of time here graphing and looking at water and studying maps. Um, here. So now let's get up to the fishing part. All right, so the front of my boat, uh, a step box here, cooler. Pretty obvious. We keep food, we keep ice, we keep drinks in there. We've got some cookies in here, maybe dessert after dinner. Um, I do have a flipping deck insert, so I'm fishing a team tournament. I can drop that carpet in here. Um, and so I do have my suction cup mount for my GoPro, so I do a lot of my filming. You also see that I do keep a YOLO tech uh, in the stern. So depending how many people are in the boat, what I'm trying to shoot, I got multiple options um, for filming. And I run that off a of USB power right into the boat. So I always have constant power, not relying on batteries. So whether it's the YOLO tech or here, running on constant power, um, and I mount that on the windshield. So there's two big rod lockers, uh, storage compartments, and one main one. So the second rod locker I rarely use to uh, keep rods. This is usually hard boxes. Lots of crankbaits, jerkbaits, topwaters. I got bags of extra lures, a bunch of uh, chatterbaits and jackhammers and fender crickets in here. Uh, I keep some spare rain suits in here. Sometimes life jackets. I got a whole box of Kitex. Um, I also got some of my bulk plastics in here. All right, the main big compartment. This is where I spend most of my day when I'm, uh, you know, changing out lures and stuff. So whatever is happening on the current bite right now, I got some chatterbaits. I always keep my Bass Tech jigs in here. So the baits that I really want to keep handy are in the main compartment. Um, we keep a throwable in here for Coast Guard reasons. Um, I've got some of these reusable Tupperwares where I'll throw like extra baits and use baits in here that I can reuse as trailers. Um, I have this bag, which is kind of like my tournament bag, right? So this is all the stuff that I think like this will be biting on tomorrow in the tournament. Um, 
I got some scent markers, some pliers, some scissors, all the things I need to keep handy. And if I ever need to jump in somebody else's belt, pretty much everything I need in a pinch will be in this bag. I got another tray in here with uh, miscellaneous baits and tools, and then more bags of plastic. So like these are beavers, speed craws, these are the things that I think I'm gonna be using during the tournament. Uh, and then I got my bulk yum bingers and other baits. And then I've got a series of small boxes that I use for terminal tackle. So I'll have my drop shot and Nico, miscellaneous split rings and swivels and things like that, uh, tungsten and weights. I have another box with all jig heads in it, hooks, and then stuff for rigging tubes. So more modular, so instead of having a giant bay or box for terminal tackle, I have small modular boxes depending on needed. So if I ever need to jump in somebody else's boat or quickly find something, I just go with these small boxes. Uh, got some extra Costas. We got super glue in here. We got a bump board for measuring fish in a tournament. So this is where a lot of everything happens. Uh, this is where the stuff that I want quick access to that I'm going to use during the fishing day will be in this main compartment. Up here, I got some magnetic strips where I can keep some baits that I cut off. This is all stuff that's been used recently. Uh, I keep a snip, boomerang snip here for retying during the day in the boat. So that's what the compartment looks like for organizing. It's nice having this stuff. If you want to grab something, I want to grab a buzz bait, you know, uh, things like that, uh, things I might need uh, until I can put them away. They're safely secured there. All right, we got a landing net strapped down. We got dual rod cords on each side. That helps keep my rod secure to the deck. Uh, we have a big rod locker here. It's partially full, partially empty. I keep a massive amount of Dobbins rods in here and I wrap them all in rod gloves to really help me organize them so they don't get tangled, they're safely protected, it keeps the guides and the tips protected if you put some kind of sleeve on them. I can probably get close to 30 rods in here when it's organized. Um, I got a bunch of them out of the boat right now, uh, getting ready for the tournament tomorrow, but this is where I keep a massive amount of rods, different actions for everything you need. Um, but the rod gloves, get yourself some sleeves to take care of your rods. They're an investment and you want to make sure you protect them. All right, finally, the business right here. So we do have a, a nine inch hummingbird up here. So a single unit I feel is sufficient up here. I actually only have a down imaging unit here. Down imaging and sonar um, is enough. I don't think you need side imaging up here. Um, I got that on a ram mount. And then the Ultrex. This is the 80 pound Ultrex, uh, 52 inch shaft. Uh, it's an amazing trolling motor. Um, the spot lock feature on this helps you stay on fish. Um, it's an amazing tool for catching fish. Many times, as you see in videos and tournaments today, I'll be out fishing weed line slipping, you get a bite, you hit that spot lock, and you can get back in there. And if there's ever a school, you can just work those fish over. Um, if you catch a fish, you need to retie, you hit spot lock, you don't blow off your spot. It saves you time, it makes you more efficient, helps you make more accurate presentations of fish, and really just keep your lure in front of the fish more often. Um, TH Marine trolling motor prop help reduce vibration. I do have a hydrowave unit uh, on my boat as well. So you can see, you can have a nice equipped boat front to back. It doesn't have to be brand new. It doesn't have to be a 21 footer. You can be super competitive, put reasonably nice stuff in your boat and have a really good, uh, you know, bass rig tournament ready boat. So I hope you enjoyed the tour. Hope you learned some things, some nuggets that you can do and apply in your own boat and future boats that help you catch more fish. I hope it helps you suck less. Uh, please like, subscribe, and comment, and tune in for future videos.